And now we're into scene five, court before the same. Okay. Go you before to Gloucester with thine uh, lefters, letters. Acquaint my daughter, no further with anything you know than comes from her. Demand uh, from her, demand out of the letter. If your diligence be not speedy, I shall be there before you. Will not sleep, my lord, till I have delivered your letter. If a man's brains were in his heels, uh, were not in danger of kibes? Aye, boy. Then I prithee, be merry. <laughs> Why, thy wit shall ne'er go slipshod. Ha, 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 ha. I uh, shall see thy other daughter will use thee kindly, uh, for thou is she's as like this as a crab's like an apple. Yet I can tell what I can tell. Well, um, what canst thou tell, boy? Well, she will taste like as like this as a crab does to a crab. <laughs> Thou canst tell why thy one's nose stands in the middle of the face? No. Why to keep one's eyes on the other side's nose? Uh, what a man cannot smell out, he may spy into. Uh, I did her wrong. Canst tell how an oyster makes his shell? No. Nor I either. Now, uh, but I can tell why a snail has a house. Why? To put his head in, not to give it away to his daughters and leave his horns without a case. <coughs> I will forget my nature. So kind of father. Uh, be my horses ready. The asses are gone about him. And the reason why the seven stars are no more than seven is a pretty reason. Because they are not eight? Ah, oh, yes, indeed. Thou wouldst make a good fool. Huh. Take it again, perforce. A uh, monster ingratitude, ingratitude. If thou wert my fool, uncle, I'd have beaten thee for being old before thy time. How's that? Thou shouldst have been old before thou hadst been wise. Oh, let me not be mad, not mad, sweet heaven. Keep me in temper, I would not be mad. How now? Are the horses ready? Una? Ready, my lord. Okay, come, boy. Ah, she that's a maid now and laughs at my departure shall not be a maid long unless things be cut shorter. And act two, scene one, Gloucester's castle. Edmund and Curran meets him. Save thee, Curran. Who's reading Curran? Do anybody remember? <laughs> Let me check my computer. Ruby. Ruby. Yeah. Uh, Ruby reads Curran. Oh, that's right. Yes. Okay. And you, sir, I have been with your father and give him notice. Duke Cornwall and Reagan, his duchess, will be there with him this night. How comes that? Nay, I know not. You have heard of the news abroad. I mean the whispered ones, for they are yet in ear-kissing arguments. Not I pray you. What are they? Have you heard of no likely wars toward twixt the Dukes of Cornwall and Albany? Not a word. They do. Then in time, fare you well, sir. The Duke be here tonight, the better, best, and these weaves itself perforce into my business. My father hath set guard to, to take my brother, and I have one thing, 
of a queasy question that I must act. Briefness and as fortune work. Brother, a word, descend. Brother, I stay. Ah, my father watches. Oh, sir, fly this place. Intelligence is given where you are hid and have now the good advantage of the night. Have you not spoke against the Duke of Cornwall? He's coming hither now in the night, in the haste, and Reagan with him. Have you nothing said upon this party against the Duke of Al Albany? Advise yourselves. I am true, not a word. I hear my father coming. Pardon me. In coming, I must draw my sword upon you. Draw, and it seem to defend yourself. And now quit you well. Yield. Come before my father. Light. Ho. Here. Fly, brother. Torches. Torches. So farewell. Ah, some blood drawn on me would beget opinion. <laughs> oh, ow. And of my more fierce endeavor, I have seen drunken do more than this in sport. Father, father, stop, stop, no help. Now, Edmund, where's the villain? Oh, here stood he in the dark, his sharp sword drawn out, and mumbling of wicked charms, conjuring the moon to stand auspicious mistress. But where is he? Look, sir, I bleed. Where is the villain, Edmund? Oh, fled he this way, sir, and when by no means he could. Pursue him, ho! Oh. Go after. Oh, persuade me to the murder of your lordship. And that I told him, the revenging gods against par parasites did all their thunders bend. Spoke with now manifold and strong a bond, the child was bound to the father. Sir, in time, seeing how loathly opposite I stood in this unnatural purpose, in fell motion by my unprovided body, lanced my arm, and when he saw my best alarmed spirits, bold in the quarrels of the right, roused to the encounter, and whether gasted by the noise I made, Full, full, suddenly he fled. Let him fly far. Not in this land shall he remain uncaught and found dispatch. The noble duke, my master, my worthy arch and patron, comes tonight. By his authority I will proclaim it. That which he finds him shall deserve our thanks, bringing the murderous coward to the stake. He that conceals him, death. When I dissuaded him from his intent, I found him pite to do it, and a cursed speech I threatened to discover him. He replied, Thou unpossessing bastard, dost thou think I would stand against thee? Would the reposal of any trust, virtue, or worth in thee make thy words faith? <laughs> No, that I should deny, and this I would. I, that though thou didst produce my very character, I'll turn it all to thy suggestion, plot, and damned practice, and thou must make a dullard of the world, if they not thought the prophets of my death were very pregnant and potential spurs to make thee seek it. Strong and fast villain, would he deny this letter? I never got him. <laughs> Hark, the Duke's trumpets. I know not where he comes. All ports all bar. The villains shall not escape. The Duke must grant me that. Besides, his pitcher I will send far and near, that all the kingdom may have the due note of him and of my land, loyal and natural boy. I'll work the means to make thee capable. Oh, now, my noble friend, since I came hither, which I can call but now, I have heard strange news. 
If it be true, all vengeance comes too short, which can pursue the vendor. How dost any lord? Oh, madam, my old heart is cracked. It's cracked. What? Did my father's godson seek your life? He whom my father named, your Edgar? Oh, lady, lady, shame would have hit hid. Was he not companion with the riotous knights that tend upon my father? I know not, madam. It's too bad, too bad. Yes, madam, he was of that consort. No marvel then, though he were ill affected. Tis they have put him on the old man's death to have the expense and waste of his revenues. I have this present evening from my sister been well informed of them and with such cautions that if they come to sojourn at my house, I'll not be there. For I assure thee, Regan, Edmund, I tell, I hear that you have shown your father a childlike welcome. It was my duty, sir. He did beray his practice and receive this hurt, you see, striving to apprehend him. Is he pursued? I, my good lord. If he be taken, he shall never more be feared of doing harm. Make your own purpose, how in my strength to plead. For you, Edmund, whose virtue and obedience doth this incident so much commend itself, you shall be ours, nature, for such deep trust we shall much need. You we first see on. I shall serve you, Lord, sir, and truly how ever else. For him, I thank your grace. You know not why we came to visit you. Tis out of season, treading dark-eyed night. Occasions, noble Gloucester, of some polite, some poise, wherein we must have use of your advice. Our father he hath writ, so hath our sister of differences, which I best thought it fit to answer from our home. The several messengers from hence attend dispatch. Our good friend lay comforts to your bosom and bestow your needful counsel to our business, which craves the instant use. I serve you, madame. Your graces are right welcome. Before Gloucester's castle is Kent and Walt Oswald. Good morning to the friend, or to this house. Hi. Where may we set our home? In the mire. Please, if thou lovest me, tell me. I love thee not. Why, then I care not for thee. If I had thee in Lipsbury Pinfold, I would make thee care for me. Why dost thou use me thus? I know thee not. But fellow, I know thee. What dost thou know me for? A knave, a rascal, an eater of broken meats, a base, proud, shallow, beggarly, three-suited, hundred-pound, filthy, worsted, stocking knave, a lily-livered, action-taking knave, a horson, glass-gazing, super-serviceable, fiddical rogue, one trunk inheriting slave, one that would be a bored in way of good service, and art nothing but the composition of a knave, beggar, coward, panda, the son of an heir of a mongrel bitch, one whom I would beat into clamorous whining if thou deniest the least syllable of thy addition. Why, what a monstrous fellow art thou that's to rail on one that is neither known to thee or knows thee. Oh, what a brazen-faced varlet art thou to deny thou knowest me. It is two days ago since I tripped up on thy heels and beat thee before the king Draw you, rogue, for though it be night, yet the moon shines. I'll make a sop of the moonshine of you. Draw, you horse and cullenly barber monger. Draw! Away, I'll have nothing to do with thee. Draw, you rascal. You come with letters against the king, and take vanity the puppet's part against the royalty of her father. Draw, you rogue, or I'll soak carbonado your shanks. Draw, you rascal. Come your ways. Help. Oh, murder! Strike, you slave! Stand, rogue! Stand, you neat slave! Strike! Oh, murder, murder! 
Uh, how now? What's the matter? Yeah, well, with you, Goodman boy, if you please. Come on, fleshy. Come on, young master. Weapons! Arms! What's the matter here? Peace upon your lives. He dies and strikes again. What is the matter? Again? Muted. The messengers from our sister and, and the king. What is your difference? Speak. I'm scarce impressed, my lord. Oh, no marvel. You have so bestirred your valor. You cowardly rascal. Nature disclaims in thee a tailor made thee. Oh, the strange fellow, a tailor made a man. Aye, a tailor, sir. A stone cutter or painter could not have made him so ill, though they had been but two years of the trade. Speak yet, how grew your quarrel? This ancient puppy, sir, whose life I have spared, had suit of his great beard. Oh, thou horse and zed, thou unnecessary letter! My lord, if you will give me leave, I will tread this unbolted villain into mortar and daub the wall of a jakes with him. Spare my grey beard, you whack jail. Hey, sir, you beastly knave, know you no weapons? Oh, yes, sir, but anger hath a privilege. Why art thou angry? Oh, that such a slave as this should wear a sword, who wears no honesty. Such smiling rogues as these, like rats, often bite the holy cords, a, a twain, which are too intrins, unloose, smooth every passion, that in the natures of their lords rebel. Bring oil to fire, snow to the colder moods, renege, affirm, and turn their halcyon beaks with every gale and vary of their masters, knowing not like dogs, but following <laughs> a plague upon your epileptic visage. Smile you my speeches as if I were a fool. Goose, and I had you upon certain plain. I'll drive ye keckling on to Camelot. What art thou mad, old fellow? How fell you out? Say that. No contraries hold more antipathy than I and such a knave. Why dost thou call him knave? What is his fault? His countenance likes me not. No more perchance does mine or his or hers. Sir, it is my occupation to be plain. I have seen better faces in my time than stands on any shoulder that I see before me at this instant. Sir, in good faith or in sincere verity, under the allowance of your great aspect, whose influence, like the wreath of radiant fire on flickering Phoebus's front, what's meant by this? To go out of my dialect, which you have discommended so much. I know, sir, I am no flatterer. He that beguiled you in a plain accent was a plain knave, which for my part I will not be, though I should win your displeasure to entreat me to it. What was the offense you gave him? I never gave him any. You became master very late to strike at me upon his destruction when he, compact and flattering his displeasure, tripped me behind, being down, insulted, frail, and put upon him such a deal of man that worthied him such praises of the king. For him, the tempting who was self subdued and in the fleshman of his dread exploits, drew on the ear again. Oh, none of these rogues and cowards, but Ajax is their fool. Fetch forth the stocks, you stubborn ancient knave, who Reverend Braggart will teach you. Sir, I am too old to learn. Call not your stocks for me. I serve the king, on whose employment I was sent to you. You shall do small respect, show too bold malice against the grace and person of my master, stocking his messenger. Fetch forth the stocks, to the heavenly in honor. There shall he sit till noon. Till noon, till night, my lord, and all night too. 
Why, madam, if I were your father's dog, you should not use me so. Sir, being his knave, I will. <laughs> this is what the fellow of the self claimed to call her our sister speaks of. Come, bring away the stocks. Let me beseech your grace not to do so. His fault is much, and the good king, his master, will check him for it. Your proposed low correction is such as a basest and commonest wretches for pilferings and most common trespassers are punished with. A king must take, Ill, take it ill that he's so slightly valued in his messenger should have him thus restrained. I'll answer that. My sister may receive it much more worse to have her gentleman abused, assaulted, or following her affairs. Put him, put in his legs. Come, my good lord, away. I am sorry for thee, friend. Tis the duke's pleasure, whose disposition all the world well knows, will not be rubbed nor stopped. I'll entreat for thee. Pray you do not, sir. I have watched and traveled hard. Some some time I shall sleep out. The rest I'll whistle. Good man's fortune may grow out at heels. Give you good morrow. The Duke's to blame in this. Twill be ill taken. The king, it must approve the common saw. Thou out of heaven's benediction con oh, excuse me, comest son approach thou beacon to this under globe by thy comfortable beams i may peruse this letter nothing almost sees miracles but misery i know it is from cordelia who hath most fortunately been informed of my obscured course and shall find time from this enormous state seeking to give losses the remedies. All weary and o'erwatched, take vantage heavy eyes, not to behold this shameful lodging. Fortune, good night, smile once more, turn thy wheel. I heard myself proclaimed, and by the happy hollow of a tree escaped the hunt. No port is free, no place but large, and there's no unusual While I may escape, I will preserve myself, and am taught to take the paces of the coolest ship that ever can. Can you talk closer to the microphone? I can't hear. Can, um, is this louder when I talk like this? Oh, perfect. Yeah, much, yeah, much better. better. Much better. Oh, okay. okay, I didn't even know where my microphone is. Okay, so this is louder, right? Yes, okay. better. Where art thou, Edgar? Right. While I may escape, I will preserve myself, and then be thought to take the basis in the most poorest shape that ever penury and contempt of man brought near to beast. My face, thou grime that still blanket my loins, health all my hair in knots, and with presented nakedness outface the winds and persecutions of the sky. A country can be proof and precedent of bedlam beggars, who with roaring voices strike in their numbed and mortified bare arms, pins, wooden tricks, nails, sprigs of rosemary, and with this horrible object from low farms, Poor pelting villages, sheep coats and mills, sometime with lunatic bands, sometime with prayers and forced out charity. Poor Tully Good, poor Tom, God something yet. Edgar, I am nothing. It is strange that they should so depart from home and not send back my messengers. Oh, I see. Um, <laughs> Una, are you the gentleman? Um, as I learned, the night before, there was no purpose on them of this remove. 
Hail to thee, noble master. Ha! Ah. <laughs> Makes thou this shame. Hail to thee, noble time. master. Uh, ha! Makes thou this shame thy pastime? Canst hear me? I'm no, my lord. Yeah, I oh. froze. My my, my uh, particular Zoom keeps freezing, and it actually shot me out once already. So oh. sorry about that. That's all right. Stay with us. <laughs> so he wears cruel garters, and horses are tied by the heads, dogs yes. and bears by the neck, monkeys by the loins, and men by the legs. When a man's or lusty at legs, he wears wooden other stocks. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he that hath so much thy place misunderstood to set the set thee here? It is both he and she, your son and daughter. No. Yes. No, I say. I say yes. Uh, <laughs> by Jupiter, I swear, no. Sorry, I'm frozen again. Uh, yes, they have. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm by frozen, Jupiter, so I don't know where you where we are. Oh, he said, "By Jupiter, I swear." By no. Jupiter, I swear. I. By Juno, I swear. I. Yeah. Thou dost not do it. Thou, thou couldst not. Uh, would not do it. Tis worse than murder to do upon request such violent outrage. Resolve me with all the modest haste which way uh, thou must deserve. Sorry, it's one of the drawbacks they... of Zoom. What? One of the drawbacks of Zoom is that you all keep, from my, uh, I'm on the Chaminade one because I live on the campus, and you keep all being frozen, so I don't know where you are in the script. Oh. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, thank well, you thank you. There, That's what's happening. Should I slow down? No. Uh, it's okay. just, it keeps knocking all of you off or it freezes, and oh, I don't know where sorry. you're going with the script. Oh, okay. Are we at Kent's long speech now? Uh, yes. Okay, well, yeah, let's go there. My lord. My lord, at their home, I did commend your highness's letters to them. There I was risen from the place that showed my duty kneeling. Came there a reeking post, stewed in his haste, half breathless. You freeze again? Uh, can you can you hear me? Yes. 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 No, my picture went. My picture went off. Uh, oh. That's okay. I'll still we hear you. I wonder, we would it help you. if would it help if we all turned off our video? Would that I'm going to move. More? No, no, no. It's it's the particular uh, Zoom here on the campus. So it, would it help I, to I, mute if we weren't talking? Would it help no, to mute? No, I don't think. No? I don't think so. I'll go, Gary. You're on. Okay. Um, Anyway. My lord, when at their home I did commend your highness's letters to them, ere I was risen from the place that showed my duty kneeling, came there a reeking post, stewed in his haste, half breathless, panting forth from Goneril his mistress' salutations, delivered letters spite of intermission, which presently they read on whose contents they summoned up their meanie, straight took horse, commanded me to follow and attend the leisure of their answer, gave me cold looks, and meeting here the other messenger, whose welcome I perceived had poisoned mine, being the very fellow which of late displayed so saucily against your highness, having more man than wit about me, drew, he raised the house with loud and coward cries. Your son and daughter found this trespass worth the shame which here it suffers. Winter's not gone yet, if the wild geese fly that way. Fathers that wear rags do make their children blind. But fathers that bear bags shall, find, shall see their children kind. And fortune, that errant whore, never turns the key to the poor. And for all this, thou shalt have 
Here. Oh, how this mother swells up towards my heart. Huh. Um, uh, passion down. Uh, thou climbing sorrow, thou uh, elements below. Where is this daughter? With the Earl, sir, here within. Well, uh, fo follow me, follow me not. Stay, stay here. Made you no more offense by what you speak of. None. How chance the king come with so small a train? And thou hast been set in the stocks for that. Oh, that question. And thou hast well deserved it. Why, fool? Why, fool? Why, There's fool? no Why, laboring in the winter. Ah, uh, yes, all that follow their noses are led by their eyes, but blind men, and there is not a nose among twenty that can smell him that's stinking. <laughs> let not let but the great one that goes up the hill, let him draw thee after. When a wise man gives thee better counsel, give me mine again. I would have none but knaves follow it, since a fool gives it. <laughs> and that, sir, which serves and seeks for gain, and follows but for form, will pack when it become, begins to rain, and leave thee in the storm. But I will tarry, the fool will stay, and let the wise man fly. And the knave turns fool that runs away, the fool no knave, purdy. Where learned you this, fool? Not in the stocks, fool. You know, to speak with me. They're sick, <laughs> they are weary. They have traveled all the nights, mere fetches. Uh, the images of revolt and flying off. Fetch me a better answer. My dear lord, you know the fiery quality of the duke, how unremovable and fixed he is in his own course. Vengeance, plague, death, confusion, fiery, but quality. Why, Gloucester, Gloucester, I'll speak with the Duke of Cornwall and his wife. Well, my good lord, I have informed them so. Inform them? Dost thou understand me, man? I, my good lord. The good king would speak with Cornwall, the dear father would speak with his daughter, with his daughter speak, commands, tends, service. Are they informed of this? My uh, breath and my blood. Uh, fiery, thy fiery duke, tell the hot duke that, uh, no, but not yet. Maybe he will not, well, maybe he's not well. Infirmity does will still neglect all, all things. Whereto our health is bound, we are not ourselves. When nature, being oppressed, commands the mind to suffer with the body, I'll forbear, and am fallen out with my uh, more headier will to take the uh, indisposed and sickly fit, sorry, I read it, for the sound man. Death in my on my state, wherefore should he sit here? This act persuades me that this remotion of the Duke and her in practice only. Give me my servant forth. Go tell the Duke and his wife, I'll speak with them. Now, presently, bid them come forth and hear me, or at the, or at their chamber door, I'll beat the drum till it cries sleep to death. I will I would have all well betwixt you. Oh me, my heart, my be rising heart, but but down. I to it, uncle, as the cockney did the eels when they put him in the pace alive. She napped him in the coxcomb with a stick, 
and cried, down, down, wanton, wantons, down. Twas her brother that, in pure kindness to his horse, buttered his hay. Good. Good morning to you both. A hail to your grace. I'm glad to see your highness. Regan, I think you are. I know what reason I have to think so, if thou shouldst not be glad. I would divorce me from thy mother's womb. Sepulchring uh, an adulteress. Oh, art thou free? Some other time for that. Beloved Regan, thy sister's not. Oh, Regan, she hath tied sharp tooth unkindness. L like a vulture, here. I can scarce speak to thee. Thou dost not believe how depraved a uh, quality. Oh, Regan! I pray you, sir, take patience. I have hoped that you less know how to value her desert than she can to scant her duty. Say, what? how is that? I cannot think my sister in the least would fail her obligation. If, sir, perchance she have restrained the rights of your followers, Tis on such ground and to such wholesome end as clears her from all blame. My curse is on her. Oh, sir, you are old. Nature in you stands on the very verge of her confine. You should be ruled and led by some discretion that discerns your state better than you yourself. Therefore, I pray you that to our sister you do make a return, say you have wronged her, sir. Ask her forgiveness. Do you but mark how this becomes the house? The, the, how this becomes the house? Dear daughter, I confess that I am old. Age is unnecessary. On my knees I beg that, that you'll vouchsafe me, uh, me raiment, bed and, and food. Good, sir. No more. These are unsightly tricks. Return you to my sister. Never, Regan. She hath baited me for half my bait, half my train. Look back upon me. Struck me with her tongue, uh, most serpent-like, upon the very heart. All those stirred, sh stored vengeances of her heaven fall on this ungrated top. Strike her young bones. You, 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 you talking airs, you, you, with lameness, uh, fie, fie, sir, fie. You nimble and lightnings, dart your blinding flames, uh, into yeah. her scorn eyes, infect her beauty. You fen, fen suck fogs, drawn by the powerful sun to fall and blister. Oh, the blessed gods. So will you wish on me when the rash mood is on? No, Regan, thou shalt never have my curse. Thy tender-hearted nature shall not give thee to harshness. Her eyes are fierce, but thine do comfort and do not burn. Tis not in thee to grudge my pleasures, to cut off my train, to bandy hasty words, to scant my sizes, and in conclusion to oppose the bolt against my coming in. Thou better knowest that uh, the offices of nature, the bond of childhood, effects of courtesy, dues of gratitude, thy half of the kingdom hast thou not forgot, wherein I thee endowed. Good, sir, to the purpose. What, who put my man in the stocks? What, what trumpet that? I know it, my sisters. This approves her letter that she would soon be here. Oh, is your lady come? This is a slave whose easy borrowed pride dwells in the sickly grace of her, of her he follows. Out, varlet, from my sight. What means your grace? Who sock stocked my servant? Regan, I have good hope. Thou didst not know it on it. Who comes here? Oh, heavens, if you do love old men, you, if your sweet 
sway allow obedience. If you yourselves are old, uh, make it your cause and, and send down and take my part. Uh, art thou ashamed to look upon this beard? O oh, Regan, wilt thou take her by this hand? You mean? Uh, why not by the hand, sir? How have I offended? All's not offense that indiscretion finds in dotage terms so. O oh, sides, you are soon tough. Will you yet hold? How came my man in the stocks? I set him there, sir. But his own disorders deserved much less advancement. You? Did you? I pray you, father, being weak seems so. If till the expiration of your month you will return and sojourn with my sister, dismissing half your train, come then to me. I am now from home, and out of that provision which shall be needed, needful for your entertainment. Return to her? And fifty men dismissed? No. Rather, I uh, abjure all roofs and choose uh, to wage against the enmity of the air, to be a comrade with the comrade with the wolf and the owl. Necessity sharp pinch. Return to her. Why the hot-blooded France that dowerless took uh, the, our youngest born? I could as well be well be brought to knee his throne as squire like pension beg and keep base life afoot. Return her with her. Persuade me rather to be slave and sumpter in this detested broom. At your choice, sir. I pray thee, daughter, do not make me mad. I will not trouble thee, my child. Farewell. We'll no more meet, no more see one another. But yet thou art my flesh, my blood, my, my, my daughter, or rather a disease that's in my flesh, which I must needs call mine. Thou art a boil, a plague sore, an embossed carbuncle in my corrupted blood. But I'll not chide thee. Let shame uh, come when it will. I do not call it. I do not bid the thunder bearer shoot, nor tell the tales of thee to high judging Jove. Um, mend when thou canst. Be better at thy leisure. I can be patient. I can say with Regan, I and my hundred knights. Not altogether so. I look not for you yet, nor am provided for your fit welcome. Give ear, sir, to my sister. For those that mingle reason with your passion must be content to think you old, and so. But she knows what she does. Is this well spoken? I dare about it, sir. What? Fifty followers? Is it not well? What should you need of more? Yea, so many. With that both charge and danger speak against so great a number? How in one house should many people under two commands hold amity? Tis hard, almost impossible. Why might, why might not you, my lord, receive attendance from those that she calls servants? Oh, from mine. Why not, my lord, if then they chance to slack you, we could control them. If you will come to me, for now I spy a danger. I entreat you to bring but five and twenty. To no more will I give place or notice. I gave you all. And in good time you gave it. Uh, made you my guardians, my, my depositors, uh, but kept a reservation to be followed with but such a number. What? Must I come to you with five and twenty? Regan, said you so? Speak it again, my lord. No more with me. Those wicked creatures yet to look so well favored when others are more wicked, not being the worst, stands in some rank of praise. I'll go with thee. Thy fifty yet doth double five and twenty, and thou art twice her love. Hear me, my lord. 
would you five and twenty, ten or five, to fall in a house where twice so many have a command to tend you? What need one? A reason not the need? A basis beggars are in the poorest things superfluous. Allow not <clears throat> nature more than nature needs. Man's life is cheap as beasts. Thou art a lady. If only to go warm were gorgeous. Why, nature needs not what your gorgeous uh, wears, but scarcely keeps thee warm. But for true need, you heavens give me that patience, patience I need. You see me here, you gods, a poor old man, full of grief as age, wretched in both. If it be you that stir these daughters, hearts against thy father, against your father, fool me not so much, to bear it tamely. Touch me with noble ang anger, and let not a woman wear weapons, water drops, stain my man's cheeks. No, you unnatural hags, I will have such revenges on you both, that all the world shall, I, I, I will do such things, uh, what they are yet I know not but they shall be the terrors of the earth. You think I'll be, you think I'll weep? No, I'll not weep. I have full cause for weeping, but this heart shall break into a thou hundred thousand flaws or else I'll weep. Oh fool, I shall go mad. Your limbs withdraw, it will be a storm. This house is little. The old man and his people cannot be well bestowed. Tis his own blame if I put himself to rest and must needs taste his folly. For his particular, I'll receive him gladly, but not one follower. So I am proposed. Where is my lord of Gloucester? Follow the old man forth. He is returned. The king is in high rage. Whither is he going? He calls to horse. But will I know not whither? He's best to give him way. He leads himself. My lord, entreat him by no means to stay. Alack, the night comes on, and the bleak winds do sorely ruffle. For many miles about, there is scarce a bush. Oh, sir, to willful men, the injuries that they themselves procure must be their schoolmasters. Shut up your doors. He is attended with a desperate train, and what they may incense him to, being apt to have his ears abused. Wisdom bids fear. Uh, the man, shut up your doors, my lord. It's a wild night. My Reagan counsels well. Come out of the storm. With Act Three, we'll take a break. Okay. Mm. Run to the bathroom. Ten minutes. Ten I'm minutes. Gonna... Okay. Good. I'm gonna I'm gonna move to a new location that's better. Don't go away. No, I'm gonna I'm just going up here to my desk because the... you cataracts and hurricanes spout till you have drenched our steeples, drowned the cocks. You sulfurous and thought executing fires. Von couriers of oak saving thunderbolts singe my white head, and thou, all shaking thunder, strike flat the thick rotundity of the world, crack nature's molds, all German spill at once that makes in grateful man. Old uncle, court holy water in a dry house is better than this rainwater out of door. Good uncle, in and ask thy daughter's blessing. Here's a night pities, but neither wise man nor fool. Rumble thy bellyful, spit fire, spout rain. No rain, wind, thunder, fire, my daughters. I tax not you, you elements, with unkindness. I never gave you kingdom, called you children. You owe me no subscription, then let fall your horrible pleasure. Here I stand. Your slave, a poor, infirm, weak, and despised old man. But yet I call you servile ministers that will with two pernicious daughters join your hand in the end of battles against a head so old and white as this. Oh, tis foul. 
he that is a house to put his head in his good headpiece, the codpiece that will house before the head has any, the head and he shall louse. And so beggars marry many. The man who makes his his toad what, what he ha, his heart should make shall of a corn cry woe and turn his sleep to wake. For there's never yet fair woman but she made mouths in a glass. No, I will be the pattern of all patience. I will say nothing. <gasps> Good, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Kent. Oh, you're not on audio. Oh dear. You Who's there? there you <laughs> thank go. you. Oh Mary, here's a grace and cod's piece. Here's that's a wise man and a fool. Alas, sir, are you here? Things that love night love not such nights as these. The wrathful skies gallow the very wanderers of the dark and make them keep their caves. Since I was a man, such sheets of fire, such bursts of horrid thunder, such groans of roaring wind and rain, I never remember to have heard. Man's nature cannot carry the fiction nor the fear. Let the great gods keep this dreadful part of the putter out of, or what a putter, putter over our heads. Find out what the enemies know. Tremble, thy wretch, that thou hast within thee undivulged crimes, unwhipped of justice. Hide thee, thou bloody hand, thou perjured, and thou stimula of virtue, that thou art incestuous, caitiff, to pieces shape, that under cover, covert, and convenient saving, hath practiced on man's life. Close pent up guilt, give your concealing countenance and draw and cry those dreadful summoners grace. I am a man more sinned against than sinning. Lack bareheaded. Gracious, my lord, hard by here's a hovel, some friendship that lend you against the tempest. Repose you there while I to this hard house, more harder than the stones whereof tis raised which even but now demanding after you denied me come in, return, and force those scanty courtesy. Ah, oh, my wits begin to turn. C come on, my boy. H how does my boy? Art cold? I am cold myself. Where is this straw, my fellow? Ar the art of our necessities is strange and can make vile things precious. Come, your hovel. Poor fool and knave, I have one part in my heart that's sorry yet for thee. He that has a little tiny wit with the hay ho and the wind and the rain must make content with his fortunes fit for the rain. It raineth every day. I murdered the song. <laughs> True boy. Come, bring us to this hovel. This is a brave night to cool a courtesan. <laughs> I'll speak a prophecy ere I go. When priests are more in word than mutter than matter, uh, then brewers mar their malt with with water, and when nobles are their tailors tutors. And no heretics burn, but witches suitors. When in every case in all law is right, no squire in debt, nor nor poor, poor knight. When flatters do not live in tongues, nor cut purses come not to throngs, and when usurers tell their gold in the field, but Bods, bods and whores do churches build. Then shall the realm of Albion come to great confusion. Then comes the time who lives to sit 
and going shall be used with feet. And this prophecy Merlin shall make, for I live before his time. And uh, let's see, is this one of our skippers?